Hi everyone, welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to um, create some sort of charging um, device, if you like. Something to charge my um, lithium ion cells which I recovered from my laptop batteries. So this is what I've bought up to now. I've got these, um, I don't know, cell holders, I suppose they're called, for 18650 cells. I've actually got 10 of those, I've got 5 there and 5 here. And I've also got these. And these are little um, charger boards for for 3.6 volt cells. I'll just zoom into these for you. And these are quite good because they charge the they charge lithium cells properly. I mean, you can't you can't just apply any voltage to these cells. You've got to do it properly. The same as lead acid, really. They've got their own unique way of charging too. So I've got these boards. And um, I've got to create something, or well, that's what this video is about anyway, creating something to to uh, charge these cells up, which is pretty much a case of just linking these together. So I'll just zoom out and um, let's start. Okay, so the first thing I noticed is that the hole sizes on this um, on these little boards are not right. I don't know what's going on here, but um, if you look here, um, I'll just get a pen or something and use the soldering iron. If you look here, this, um, well we'll start with in. Why are they that big? I mean, these are, these are rated at 1 amp. So why are the holes that big? They don't need to be that wide. It's like, I don't know, that's like 5 amp or 10 amp cable or something like that. Probably about 10 amp cable. So you know the size so why is it why have they gone that mad I don't know anyway so I have to do something with that and then battery out this one's a big one and this one's small so what is going on here and they're all like that well not all of them but most of them are like that so what is going on here um, that to me looks like the right size so what's going on here I don't know but anyway I'll have to work with it and um, come up with something so the battery um, cable or wire or whatever you want to call it is that size. So yeah this is really silly. I don't know why it's so big. And here it's here it's okay, but uh, pain. Anyway, um, so I'll come up with a solution and I'll let you know. Okay, I've had a bit of a play about and I've decided on how I'm going to do it. I've got these little, well actually they're not little, they're quite thick-ish jumper leads and I'm going to use these. You see these on PCBs and stuff, you know, if you buy a, a radio or whatever, or a microwave. So I'm going to use these. So I'll get some red and black ones out. And this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the uh, little board and in or towards me is red and this one's black so I'll just put that in there oops put that in there there we go so this one towards me is the red wire and the one this side is the black wire so this is what I'm going to do I've got the red piece I'm going to dip it into some flux and then, I'll just leave that there for a second, I'm going to plate, well it, this is this is very poor really but I'm going to cover this over like that and cover the other one over so they're completely covered then I'm just going to get the end, heat it up and stick it up there like that that's how I'm going to do it. Now, it's a bit silly because the holes are way too big, but anyway, what can you do? You've just got to make do with what you've got, I suppose. There we go. And that's the process I'm going to use. So I'll just zoom out and show the end, well, see the end product. But um, 
it's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to do that for, well, all ten I think really. So I'll just put that over there. And I'll repeat for the rest. Alright, so I've soldered them up and actually it's not a bad job really. You don't actually have to use Fluxite if you don't want to, but the very first one, I was wondering you know, how I was going to go about it and I think I got it a little bit dirty, but I mean, you don't really need to use that. I did I did most of them without the Fluxite and it seemed to work well. I mean, these later ones here, it's quite a neat job really. Okay, so I've done these and they're uh, ready so I'm just going to wire the batteries up to them now so I keep saying batteries they're actually cells I mean one cell is a cell and multiple cells is a battery but anyway um, yeah so I'm going to wire these up now so I'll pro this will probably be very easy let's just zoom in there this will be very easy I'll just put that in there like that solder it in and same, I have to use the same technique because these holes are huge. I don't know why. I mean, they're rated at one amp, so why? You know, I don't, I don't really understand that. Anyway, I'll just do that like that, and then, yeah, we should be fine. Okay, so I'll just start this again here. Which on switch? So the one. Okay, so I'll just have to smooth over these holes. like that. Now, looks like I might actually run out of wires here, I'll just make sure. Oh no, of course I'm not going to run out of wires because I'm using the wire from the battery. Right, okay. So, um, going towards me is black, so I'll just heat this up, push that through and let go. And then the same for this one. Heat it up, push it through, and let go. And essentially, that's it. So, what I need to do is feed 5 volts to this end here, and we'll be good to go. For now, I'm just going to use my um, my power supply unit, but I'm probably going to get a dedicated 5 volt switching power supply, maybe a a hundred watts or something like that, twenty amps, so I can charge. I mean, well, ten of these rated at one amp is of course ten amps, and ten amps at five volts is fifty watts. So if I get a hundred watts, we'll be fine. So in a hundred watt switch mode power supply, alternatively, you could use a, I don't know a mobile phone charger or a tablet charger or something like that, but they're only rated at usually about two to three amps, so you could only really charge three of these at once so yeah okay so I've wired the cell holders up to them so now they look like this but now what I'm going to do is wire these in parallel so I'm going to need to twist these together so if I take say 15 mil off um, Mil? Yeah, about that. Take 15 mil off each of these. And then I'm going to twist them together. What's happened here? Take 15 mil off each one. And I'll twist them together. 15 mil off that one. And then when I've took 15mm off all of these, I'll twist the ends together, probably solder them together, and then put them in some sort of connection block or something like that. And it's just a way of putting all these in parallel and giving them all 5 volts. Um, 
and what that means is that I don't have to, you know, mess about with smaller, tra uh, smaller adapters. I mean, you could use several phone chargers or something like that, but if I wire all these parallel, it means that it's set up ready to use one one big um, adapter, which I find will, will be a lot easier. But I think I've priced them up, and I think they cost about ten pounds. You know, to get a, a twenty amp on. Anyway, so what have we got here? So there's the first one. Move this out of the way. Okay, so here we go. Twist the first ones together. And basically that's all I'm going to do, twist all the red ones together and then twist all the black ones together. There's another red, let's twist that into it. I've got these little connectors, well they're not little actually, they're quite big but... Yeah, I think I'll solder those five and I think I'll solder another five separately just so that I can remove them and put them into two um, five amp banks. So I'll solder those, solder those up now. I'll just put some flux on it. Now I'll have to put the black ones together as well, the black wires. It's a bit of a mess at the minute. It would be better really if it was um, if they were glued down onto something. But anyway, and the terminals are here. So what I'm going to do now is put these into this terminal block. Now the wire that comes through here, at the moment, because 5 amps is going through it, it's going to have to be rated for 5 amps, which isn't a big deal because 5 amp wire is not particularly um, big or expensive. Okay, so that's that. And my little um, power supply over here just happens to be a 5 amp power supply so it's ideal actually so I think I'll um, well I don't know if these have any reverse polarity connect, um, protection or anything like that so you know right let's see what happens so I'll turn this thing on ok we've got 5 volts there and now Well, I'm expecting these to glow up or something. I'll just make sure nothing's going to short. Make sure none of these are touching because I don't know exactly how these work, so I don't want anything to short together. And now, let's power it up and see what happens. I'm hoping that there will be hardly any draw current. So you can see they're all glowing up there. So they're glowing blue, and I assume that means they're fully charged or something or or not charging I really should look at the documentation for these modules okay so here are the five and they're working I've got the power supply set to five volts and currently it's drawing 3.15 amps and I'll just zoom in And uh, this is how it's looking at the moment. Not very tidy, but um, but it's only a test. But here we have a homemade lithium-ion battery charger, and this chip seems to be doing everything for me. So I've got a little red LED, and I assume that means it's not charged. Um, 
So, really it's a case of leaving these for an hour really. Um, so I'll carry on with the other five now, which are just here. And then maybe I'll put them all together in parallel. But um, it will be too much to handle for my power supply, I think. But, um, yeah, I'll put them together and we'll see what I can do. Okay, so I've arranged them into a beautiful circular pattern. And you can see, um, you can see that I've got all ten on the go now. And actually, um, these cells are around about three volts, if I remember rightly, or something like that. And it's only drawing, or it only attempted to draw, I'd say, just over 5 amps. So, that's not too bad. Um, as you can see there, 4.68 amps at 5.1 volts. And, um, and that is steadily going down and down and down and down. This thing actually has a limit of 5 amps. None of the cells are hot. They're all quite cool. Um... It's important to make sure that none of them overheat and they're not, so... So we're all good. So anyway, this is my um, very primitive uh, lithium-ion battery charger. And... Um, I'm going to use these cells for the drone, I think. Yeah, I'll check these out. I'll charge the cells and then I'll probably discharge them and check their um, capacity and we'll go from there. Um, if you do copy this and you do give this a go, um, it's just something to be aware of that lithium cells can apparently be dangerous, which you know, I have my own opinion on that, but apparently they can be dangerous, so take precautions. And also, um, these here, these modules, it isn't particularly clever to leave them like that because you don't want to short them together. Because basically, if you if you accidentally put the red wire and you know short it to a, another black wire, any black wire, so say if I put these two too close together or knock them, you'd basically create a dead short so you could maybe wreck your power supply, I don't know my one's got a limit, uh, it's, it's got a 5 amp limit so mine would probably just cut out but um, yeah just be careful <laughs> alright so um, updates to come I suppose, thank you for watching, bye